When you get up in the morning, don't think. Just roll out of bed, go in your life cycle, or go on a bicycle ride, or go to the gym, work out. You know that's what you have to do. And then read something and learn something. So don't even think about it. Stay hungry. As soon as you think that you're perfect, that's when you're screwed. I gotta get better. I gotta lose more weight. I gotta trim down my tummy. I gotta get bigger calves. I gotta get bigger deltas. You know, if you're not quite reaching your goal because you didn't do everything that you could do. You have time. You make the time. Too much is not enough. If I fall down, I have no fear of fainting in a gym because I know it's, it, it, it could happen. I threw up many times while I was working out, but it doesn't matter because it's all worth it. Stay hungry. I do everything that I can to be a winner and to get the body that I envision. If you do something, then do it. Go all out. You have time. You make the time. You can do it. You can do it. You can be the greatest. Do it. Go for it. I looked forward to another thousand reps of, of sit-ups. I looked forward to another 500 pounds of, of, of uh, leg press or squat. I looked forward to doing more and more curls until my arms fall off. Why? Because I knew that every rep that I did and every set that I did and more weights that I lifted, I get one step closer to turning that vision into reality. You can do it. Why do you want to work out? What is your goal? If I can see it, if I can believe it, then I can achieve it. You know, everything seems to be always impossible until someone does it. They want to be Mr. Universe. They want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, to win the championship over and over and over again, and to lift the trophy overhead. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. You can be the greatest. You can do it. I wanted to make sure that out of the 24 hours of the day, that I don't waste one single hour. Those hours were too precious. You have time. You make the time. Stay hungry. Little victories add up, and that is what gives you then ultimately confidence. You can be the greatest. Stay hungry. We all fail. The key thing is, is to keep in mind what is your goal and keep looking at that as you get up and dust yourself off. Work your butt off. It is so important that you work your butt off. Don't ever look for shortcuts. And this NFL football player comes up to me. He goes, guys, can I ask you a question? How do you keep that dog mentality? I said, let me ask you a question. When you were younger, what did you want to be? He said, an NFL football player. But once I got there, I lost that dog mentality. He had a finish line in his brain. Guess what? A true dog mentality? I have a dog at home. He never gets full. It's not enough you made to the NFL. It's not enough you ran a 5K, win a 10K. It's not enough you became a doctor, be a better doctor. It's not enough you lost 50 pounds. Go out there and do something with it. Guess what? In front of nine out here, but well, guess what? It's not enough. Stay hard. Today I was wanted, and this guy passes me in the car. It's about 100 degrees out here. 70% humidity. And the guy comes back around, looks at me. He pulls his car by me and says, Why are you out here? I said, Because you're not. Sometimes your motivation needs to be because no one else wants to do it. We need doctors, we need dentists, we need teachers. We also need savages. This message I do is not in everybody. Someone said that soft bullshit about me. Do you have sunscreen on? This message is dangerous. It's too hot. I'm not asking you to be like me. Do you. Stay hard. Your mind's getting softer. We do that shit with everything in life. A lot of you are trying to find inspiration and motivation with a depressed mindset. You don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life. You need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration. Put challenges in front of yourself. When you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's when you find inspiration. Repetition every day. Stay hard. So the other day I got an email from this lady. She said she truly enjoyed my book. But as she read it, she thought I was just crazy. So after she read it, she put the book down and started living her normal life. 
is going back paying bills, going back to work, complaining about shit. A few days later, she has time to think about the book, and it scared her. She thought, well, maybe this guy isn't crazy. And that's what scared her the most. Maybe he's here trying to show us human potential, what we're all capable of doing. A lot of people like to put titles on other people who are doing extraordinary things. It makes them feel better about themselves. Gives them a get out of jail free card. I'm not crazy, I'm just not like you. In sports, there's a thing out there called load management. A lot of us like to load manage our lives. When you do that, you can find yourself right at normal. Get off that, stay hard. With success in life comes more haters. Don't make them hurt your feelings. Use them for fuel, use them for energy. In times of need, put them on mental Rolodex in your mind. And when you don't want to do shit, roll through your brain. Pull up that person who said you couldn't do something. Weren't fast enough, good enough, smart enough. Use them for energy. Instead of killing them with kindness, torture them with success. In life, we have to continue pushing past the odds. Use everything this world has to give you for fuel. Stay hard. And anybody, not just Navy SEALs, but anybody that can accomplish anything that is hard. The only separator is, is that they really want to be there. There's some people that get inspired mm -hmm. and that inspiration moves them to try to do something. But the inspiration is very high right now in this nice environment. We're in a nice environment. I watch a movie about some badasses, you're inspired. But the second you're not in this environment and you're actually doing what inspired you, that suck factor is now real. You're now there. And only those people who have been there a million times in their minds and have lived in that water and have suffered a million times and realized my legs may break, my knee may break, my bones will hurt, I will be the coldest I've been in my life, I will be miserable and accept that. When you get a horrible situation in life, your mind immediately says, get everybody's dust, even if you want to be there. But it starts to have all these different questions in your mind that one second. And says, okay, why are you here? Why are you doing this? Why this? Why that? And then you start to say to yourself, if you don't want to be there that bad, I have a beautiful life. I'm not going to break my body up to do this. Your mind starts to say, yeah, this is stupid. But if you, have, if you are already knowing that this is going to happen to you, you have all the answers to these questions that your mind starts to give you when you're in suffer mode. Try to be 10% better than you were last week. So if you're running 30 miles a week, run 33. If you're swimming 500 meters, swim 550. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. So there's a lot of pockets of weakness nowadays. And we try to fill those pockets with lies. I did it for many years. So, I'm out here in Colorado for a conference. I go to the gym and this trainer calls me over to talk to this group of people he's training. He says, hey man, what are you doing out here? So I tell him, he says, what kind of workout should you do? I said, well, one workout I'm doing, I'm climbing this mountain, 3,000 feet, three miles. But I do that every day. So the next day I'm out looking for him. Didn't see him. A couple days later, looking for him. Didn't see him. So here I am on the mountain again, climbing it. And there's a gondola that takes you up, takes you down. I'm going up it. I see a gondola from about five minutes to the top. I look up at the gondola. I see him, face pressed up against the, the window, looking at me, our eyes meet. Don't talk about it. Be about it. Practice what you preach. Stay hard. I like suffering in the way that is competitive, yep. 
that brings out the absolute best in me and in everybody else. I want to see what you're made of. Mm. I want to see like almost like the Colosseum mm -hmm. in Rome. Mm -hmm. You can't do it by writing a paper. And what I found out, and the only message I want to get across to people is once you change one thing, your mindset, you can attack everything. Mm. People know how do you keep grinding every day? You have to make those insecurities, those fears. Like when I was 300 pounds, I didn't have any drive. I was an insecure, lying kid, afraid. I had to look in my insecurities and in my fear and find drive in that. We're all looking for passion. Passion's all around you. All the energy and fuel you need is right in yourself. It's all there. You got a lot of stuff to do to overcome. And you know, that's where I found it. I found it right there in my own insecurities. I found drive in my own insecurities. And that's, that's the most powerful thing in the world. When you can find drive in your own doubt, fear, insecurities, you become very unstoppable. I'm in search for a feeling. I'm not in search for a trophy. I'm not in search for love. I'm not in search for more followers on Instagram or social media. When I started this journey years ago and I realized that I'm going to be somebody and I'm searching for a feeling, a feeling of true victory for myself and only myself. The second I shut out the whole world and realized that one thing, that I am in this world alone, I'm fighting this race by my weakest person on the planet Earth. My goal in life was to, in my mind, believe I'm the hardest man alive and that's why the whole thing is can't hurt me that's what it's about it's about whatever you think you are you have to make that dream a reality but that's where the hard part is there's a lot of successful people in this world who still feel empty inside and they wonder why they still feel empty so they try to make another million two million three million let's buy a new car a new house a new boat Let's buy more of everything. At the end of the day, it still feels real empty inside. For me, I wasn't even successful. I just felt empty. So I was trying to hide my insecurities. You have to be there over, but not there at the graduation. Okay. You got to be there in the worst in the parts suffering. that you know over and over again. You got to live that in your mind. I'm dressing it up. Same thing with life. If you don't get inside your soul, inside your heart, and fix it, be willing to go to war with yourself. Stay hard. The number one question that I'm asked everywhere I go uh, around the world is always, how is it that I stay so motivated? What are the motivating factors in my life that keep me in this psychological space? Um, Number one will be gratitude. I try and find a way to be grateful for every single thing I have every single day. Wins, losses, loved ones, you name it. My life wasn't always this way. It was much different many moons ago. So these days I'm grateful to the bone for everything. The other thing is hunger. Uh, you always hear people say, well, it's about being number one, about being at the top. Or how about this? Um, you're always going to find somebody out there who's going to work harder. Well, I don't know that. That might be bullshit. But I know no one is going to be hungrier than I am. Uh, and I try and find a way to be grateful. So I hope that helps. It's 2 o'clock in the morning. If you're watching this, you better be doing something productive today. Very intense workout, hardcore, very heavy. Uh, creating and destroying, breaking down and building up that very dense, thick muscle. We always talk about hunger and how you always want to outwork your competition regardless of how successful you may be lucky enough to be. You want to be hungry. If you know what it's like to be hungry, you'll never be full. He said it's one thing to be hungry, it's another thing when you're starving for greatness and starving for success. And I love that because it immediately clicked, it's in my DNA. I know what it's like to operate every single day, regardless of the success that I've been a lucky son of a bitch to achieve. I operate every day as if I'm starving, so keep starving. At four o'clock in the morning is when no one else is up, so no one else is bothering you, and you can focus on whatever work you have to get done. And then by 4.30, 4.45, I'm doing some sort of cardio. It's still dark outside, so it's just me. It's 4.45 a.m., it's still dark outside, and I'm getting ready to kill this AM cardio. You can't even see me, but it's gonna be so good, it's bad.
I do this and then I'll have breakfast and then I will go do all my strength and conditioning training at a gym for about an hour and then I'll go to set. It's midnight, I'm on my honeymoon and I'm in here <laughs> working out. It's Saturday night, 1.45 a.m. I just wrapped a phenomenal workout here in the Iron Paradise, got after it hardcore. Hardest workers in the room. We just wrapped here in the Iron Paradise, another great workout. Iron ain't gonna kick its own ass, you gotta get after it, let's roll. You reach that point, you know we all reach that point where we're training and you break through to the other side, you break down barriers, you bust through ceilings, you knock down doors. Uh, that just happened for me. It's very defining. I've been slaying iron since I was 13. Our empty gym, the way we like it. It's Sunday, it is family day, it's Lord's day, it is also leg day. So, this pain ought to be fun. <laughs> Shit, happy Sunday. And in the moments where you push yourself, when no one else is around, those moments have a tendency to lead to success. Focus! up for 26 hours straight, seven hours ago I was in LA, now I'm down here in hot ass Florida, I'm heading to the set of ballers, but first I had to come here to the Iron Paradise, anchor myself, get the workout in, it's gonna allow me to work an additional 12 hours, point is I'm still tired as a motherfucker, but find your anchor, I'll see you on set. Alright, Saturday afternoon, empty gym, the way we like it, it's leg day, which means it's gonna be sweaty, painful and fun, alright, workout number two. I'm out working all my competition. We are getting after hard and heavy here in the Iron Paradise. And we're here in the West Coast Iron Paradise. All right, empty gym. The way we like it. Getting ready to get after it. Saturday evening here at the Iron Paradise, we are getting after it hardcore and heavy. I get to the gym determined, focused. Here at the Iron Paradise, we're getting after it hard and heavy, training legs. Friday night, empty gym. The way we like it. Focus! Welcome to hell on a Friday night. All right, just worked a 12-hour day. Well, 13 hour day, but who's counting? Empty gym, the iron paradise, this is my therapy. I encourage everybody out there to find your therapy. All right, Friday afternoon, clanging and banging before I gotta go into work to shoot, I went one-on-one -on -one with something. Not a dumbbell, but all the dumbbells. It's called running the rack. All right, just wrapped that 4 a.m. cardio. There's no substitute for hard work here in the garage of hell. All right, good to be back home here in Florida at the Iron Paradise. It's about 100 degrees here. Today afternoon down here in the swamp lands of hot ass Florida here in the empty gym, the Iron Paradise, empty the way we like it. Just finishing up leg day, heavy leg day under this vertical leg press. All right, here we are, 445 Saturday afternoon, the Iron Paradise. The gym is empty, just me and Tupac on the speakers. I'm getting ready to put myself through hell with this leg workout. If I don't make it back alive, someone take care of my baby. All right, here we are in the Iron Paradise down here in hot ass Florida. Swamplands out there where the alligators roam so free. I'm about ready to get after it. I'm gonna be the baddest son of a bitch in this gym. True, I'm the only dude in the gym. Doesn't matter. Get after it. Right outside these garage doors, it is 97 degrees out there. It's hot as hell. Gym, it's the second coming of hell. We're getting after it hardcore, clanging and banging. Sometimes your vision is so big, you don't know how you're gonna get there, and that's okay, you don't have to have all the answers. Keep that vision clear, your eye on the prize. I got no sleep, off the jet, came right here to the West Coast Iron Paradise. In about five minutes, this place is gonna be cranking, and I'm gonna get it on. I heard something, though, that I wanted to share with you guys as we all look to finish our week strong on this Friday. A buddy of mine named Inky Johnson on Instagram, you should follow him. He said, perspective always drives your performance. And I love that, and it's so true. Look, I'm tired, you're tired. I got a baby at home, she's gonna wake up in an hour looking for daddy. I got a baby mama at home, she's gonna give birth any day to my third daughter. I got Rampage opening worldwide, I got a lot of business to take care of. But I thought instead of going to sleep, let me come to the gym, get my workout in, and uh, clear my mind so I can attack the day. Again, perspective always drives your performance. Think about that, apply it, and finish strong. Don't ever confuse effort with results. We gotta give the effort. At the end of the day, the only thing that matters is the results. So give the effort and always stay focused on the results. Happy New Year. It is uh, January 1st. We are kicking off this new year, 2018. Very strong. Just finished leg day. The work never stops. You always gotta keep going, always. I go hardcore when I train. I don't have time to go to the bathroom. I find a bottle, I pee in it, 
and I keep training like a beast. It ain't about being the biggest and the baddest. It's about a mindset to be the best. I'll work your competition and dominate at what you do. So somebody just asked me a cool question, said, DJ, you're on top. Where could you possibly go from here? And you always talk about outworking your competition. Who's your competition? It's a great question. Thank you for the compliment, by the way. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be on top, but anytime you reach the top, you always want to make sure that you have the desire to raise the bar and take the brass ring to places it's never been. That's the key with being on top. Just because it's never been done doesn't mean it can't be done. And in terms of competition, great question. Everyone's my competition, but a fundamental key that I've learned over the years is, and I'll share it with you, my number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, uh, no boss can do it. You versus you. Focus! Always be the hardest workers in the room. And it's just a reminder that regardless of how successful we may be or how successful we're not, but we want to be, we always want to be the hardest workers in the room. It always leads with hard work. There's no substitution for hard work. Thus, working out at 11 o'clock at night when I know my competition is asleep. No matter how many hours I've flown, no matter how many miles we've traveled, regardless of what country it is, the first thing I need to do to get ready for the work day is I gotta find the gym. You have worked your ass off and you are lucky and fortunate to be number one. You have scratched, clawed, and fought your way to the top. Don't ever stop because there's always somebody else who's willing to take your place. They may not be as good as you, they may not be as hungry as you, they may not have the mana deep in here as badly as you do, but they're always there. So you feel confident, you be willing to put in the work tonight that they won't, so tomorrow you accomplish what they can. And turn the heaters on in the gym. Now, let's party. Finish your week strong, start your week strong. Just do whatever you can to make sure that you're getting the job done in a strong way. Uh, on any day that ends with why. I like to push myself because you, you guys know with leg day, you got to get your adrenaline up, your intensity up, you got to get going, you got to test your mind, you got to test your will, you got to test your metal. Um, and we're always looking for inspiration and motivation to get us through. Very late night workout here in the West Coast Iron Paradise. Uh, and I got to get it in where I can fit it in these days. I've been on daddy duty all weekend, no sleep. Put in work. Big dogs eat. Little crying puppy stay on the porch. It's Saturday night and the eagle has landed. It feels so good to be home. I just got back from China, an incredible trip. Now right now, my boys, my colleagues, my friends are trying to give me shit. They're saying, let's get dressed tonight. Let's go out to all the Golden Globes parties. I said, I'm not going to the Golden Globes parties. They said, why not? We just got back from China. I said, why not? I said, because we got work to do. This is my party right here. This is my Golden Globes party. This right. Hardest workers in the world. Right. Kicking this week off right here. Let's go. Put it down in this gym. I'm the guy who was evicted at 15, as you guys know. By 23, I had seven bucks in my pocket. I value a hard-earned dollar. Train hard, stay strong, and above all else, let's get that ass back to work. Here we go. All right, here we are. It's very late Thursday night from the Iron Paradise. Uh, we just wrapped a hardcore workout. It was nice and intense. This is what we call therapy. Iron therapy. Do not go gentle into that dark night, and it is reflective of a spirit that we have. We may get knocked down, may get our ass kicked, but we don't go gentle. When I'm broken, I relish it. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna use it. Because if I'm broken, then I just found my limitations. And until I know what my limitations are, how can I push them? How can I get better? Once, once I see it, once I feel it, once I see where I was broken, then I can attack that weakness. I can fill in that gap. Some of you have dreams and visions and businesses and ideas and concepts and they're beautiful, but until you pay the sacrifice, I swear you can't have success where you have not had sacrifice. I swear you won't get it just because you want it, but just because you think you're worth it. You will succeed in the areas and to the degree of your sacrifice.
You never say no. You never say it can't get done. Don't you ever say out your mouth it can't get done. Even if you feel in your heart it can't get done, you don't say it out loud. You let the broke folks say that. I can reinforce that breach. You let the folks they fire first say that. You always say it can get done. It can be the mark of victory or it can be the mark of defeat. You can't let anything stop you from doing what you were called to do. Listen to me, you have to be careful when you hang around average people. All they're going to do is tell you what they can't do, and that's okay that they can't do it, but that has absolutely nothing to do with us. We can go from being homeless and high school dropouts to having PhDs writing books and becoming the voice of a generation. We can do whatever we believe we can do, and we don't need anybody's permission to do it but ours. All right, great, listen to me, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am phenomenal, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am going to do great things, and I don't owe anybody an apology. I am. I was created to be great. I was created to do great things. I was created to have great things, and I will no longer ask others for their permission. So in order for us to have and be and do everything we were born to do is number one, we have to kill the noise. We have to stop going to other people and looking to other people for their permission to do what only we can do. Now it's time to see who has the heart. Now is the time to prove to yourselves and prove to everyone out there you are worthy of something on earth. And you're able to do something special that no one else in the world can do. Every champion has felt it. Go out there, take no prisoners, have no regrets, have no fear. Lay it all out on the line. Every president has felt it. Every king has felt it. Every lion has felt it. Every winner has felt it. Every soldier has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. The urge. You never say no. You never say it can't get done. Don't you ever say out your mouth it can't get done. Even if you feel in your heart it can't get done. You don't say it out loud. You let the broke folks say that. You can't let anything stop you from doing what you were called to do. Get up. Go. Fight on. We must find a way to push through pain. To understand that's on the other side of that story. Some of you have dreams and visions and businesses and ideas and concepts and they're beautiful, but until you pay the sacrifice, I swear you can't have success where you have not had sacrifice. I swear you won't get it just because you want it or just because you think you're worth it. You will succeed in the areas and to the degree of your sacrifice. Do not take the easy way out. Not give up based on instinct. If you are forced to stand down, to retreat, so that you can rebuild and reattack, so be it. I don't care if you don't have the money, if you don't have the help, and you don't have the family for it and you don't have the background for it, and you don't have the friends for it, don't you give up on your dream. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. Don't you do it. It may take you twice as long. You may have to take courses and classes. You might not read as fast. You might not move as quick. You might not have as much. But don't you quit. Every champion has felt it. Every president has felt it. Every king has felt it. Every lion has felt it. Every winner has felt it. Every soldier has felt it. Every victorious person has felt it. The urge to quit. How do you get to the gym every day? How do you, how do you change your diet? How do you overcome fear of failure, or fear of success, or, or fear of fear itself? Believing in yourself 
is the first secret to success. You have to find your inner passion. The thing that wakes you up in the morning. The thing that you think about all day. The thing that you wish you were getting paid for. Once you find it, you need to believe you can do it. Could I become committed to the process of what I was doing without being emotionally attached to the results of what I was doing? In other words, if I didn't get what I thought I was going to get, can I still show up and be just as dedicated, just as committed, and just as on fire as I was at day one? Right? Because everybody knows how to respond when they get what they're supposed to get and things go the way it's supposed to go. I think that's the reason the quote says you judge the character of a person not by where they stand in times of comfort and convenience. You judge the character of a person by where they stand in times of challenge and controversy. You got some of the most brilliant people on the face of this planet. When they hear that verse, they can't fight themselves out of a paper bag. And it's not even that they don't have the will, like they got it. It's that the perspective about the adversity isn't right. And I firmly believe perspective drives performance every day of the week. How an individual view what they do will always affect how they do what they do. Folk can't understand why they're trying to pull you down, but you're still rising. Uh, they don't want to see you make it, but you're still driving. You're still living good. You're still eating well. They, they, they have tried everything they know to pull you away, but you just keep getting closer and closer and closer to your goal and your breakthrough. No matter what happens, never stop believing in yourself. It is the strongest factor of success. Self-esteem is everything. Believe you deserve it. Believe you can do it. Believe you have the ability. Believe you are on the right path. Believe you'll get it. And most importantly, believe in yourself. You gotta take my life before you take my drive. I wasn't working just to be a great football player. I wanna be a great man. I wanna be a great father for my children. I wanna be a great husband for my wife. I wanna be a great servant in the world. I don't want when adversity or rain comes, I'm the guy, I was great before the adversity, but the moment the adversity hit, I never turned back to true form. I don't wanna be that person that's great when everything is going all good, but when something goes wrong, they flee and they want nothing to do with it. I wanna be that person that's gonna show up rain, sleet, or snow, and they gonna give you everything they got. You gotta take off arrogance. You gotta take off pride. You gotta take off envy. And sometimes you gotta lose what you think you got to have in order to get your best. Square your shoulders, man. Walk like you're somebody. Talk like you're somebody. You see, my dreams and ambitions are what drive me. They keep me moving in a direction. Motivation gets me there faster. You see, you can look for outside motivation, but this won't sustain you unless you have an inner desire. You don't know how close you are to success, so why stop now? You've come so far, so why give in now? You are a champion. We're just waiting for your time to shine. Keep pushing, the same as you've always been doing. You should never give up on something you can't go a day without thinking about. Don't quit on your passion. Don't give up on your dreams. You are the only person who can bring them to life. You are the only one who can write your book, make your film, be the athlete you were destined to be, help those people you can help. It is only you who was destined to do those things. A cop asked me once, he said, man, what's your dream? I said, I'm gonna go division one, I'm gonna go to college, then I'm gonna go to the league. And he's like, you'll probably go to cell block D1. And I was like, man, you're making a mistake. Like, I've never met you a day in my life. I got an uncle in jail, right? Got an uncle in prison, right? And I was like, yeah, he's like, apple don't fall too far from the tree, right? And what he was saying to me was, you'll probably repeat the same pattern that they repeated. You come from the same household, right? And I could have looked at it and made an excuse and said, I'm gonna lower my standards to meet and accommodate my household, my experience, my situation, my circumstance. Or I can take my situation and my circumstance and raise my standard and say I'm going to be an example, I'm going to triumph, and I'm gonna use my situation and my circumstance as my driving force and my, my fuel. If I do this well, I can get 
my family in a better situation. If I do this well, I can get my mother off the double shift at Wendy's. If I do this well, I can get my own bed. If I do this well, I can get my grandmother a better living condition. If I do this well, maybe I can stop my uncles from selling drugs. This is my purpose. This is what I've been put here to do. And so the opposition, adversity, the challenges, is just a part of the process. It's gonna make me a better person. But my purpose, I can't let anything stop or detour me from tapping into that every single day, right? Because for most people, when you go through something, the person's natural perspective is, okay, what did I lose, right? What happened to me? Like, I took a loss, right? People never look at it and say, okay, man, tell me what did you gain, right? Even though I know it hurt, you didn't want to go through it, but look at it in a way to where you can say, what's the lesson in this, right? What would you say life is trying to teach you from dealing with this? Right, because I'm coming from this household to I sleep on the floor, right? With roaches, with rats, I'm not ashamed to admit it, right? And I would go to school and I would compete, I would work. And so when I met a kid that I was competing against, the only thing I felt I had the advantage in my whole life was my work ethic. And I took pride in that, right? I was never the biggest, the fastest, the strongest, never had the most resources, but I had a work ethic. And so my whole life, I wanted different for my family ever since I was a kid, right? And so never allowing a situation or a circumstance to define your life and understanding that you got something inside of you that's greater than that situation or a circumstance, but you have to constantly believe it and not only believe it, you have to make decisions and choices every single day to put you a step forward toward what you believe your destiny is. And so when I went through it, my perspective was, okay, what can I extract from it to apply to other areas and aspects of my life that I feel can help other people? And I firmly believe the quicker you can shift your perspective from yourself to others when you're in the midst of adversity, the quicker you'll get through it, right? Martin Luther King has a quote that says, life's most persistent and urgent question is what are you doing to help other people? You take that challenge when you answer the call and you see the other side of pain. It's called glory. This is called glory. There's somebody sitting home right now. There's a young 10 year old kid sitting home that don't have a father. And he's ready to join the gang. He's ready to give up. I'm telling you, don't give in. And don't ever give up. You went to bed last night. Had all these ideas about how you're going to get up this morning. It's going to be different. Things are going to be different. Today you're going to start. Start taking steps towards doing some of those projects that you know that will get you closer to living that dream life you keep playing over and over in your head. Different from the practical life that you gotta get up and meet every day. To go to the cubicle infested world and work a job just to pay the bills. Put gas in the gas tank to take you places where you don't really wanna go, to be around people you don't enjoy being around. Put groceries in a refrigerator Groceries that keep you fat and lazy, keep you away from being healthy and fit in your life. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? Pay the mortgage on a house that doesn't inspire you, it's just a nuisance and you ain't coming home to. What the fuck are you doing? And you know what makes it even worse? Is that you're a coward. Before you got from the bedroom to the kitchen, Mr. Ugly was there. Mr. Resistance, right in your ass, telling you what you were going to do different than what you want to do and what the inner voice inside of you tells you you need to do with your life. Telling you that those things that you believe matter and have a purpose in your life really don't. That the silly, the superficial, the stupid does. There are those of you right now, you should have cut a CD, you should have wrote a book, you should have got in school and got that degree. You should have started your own business. There's so many things you should have done. You should have done, but you didn't do it because you're scared. You believe that, that you said scared of what? E.I. ain't scared. You are scared. You are scared. You're scared of failure. You're scared to make a mistake. You're scared that you're not perfect. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? Are you a gazelle or are you a lion? Mr. Resistance will be there every morning. Morning, noon, and night. 
and while you were sleeping, right in your ass, kicking your ass, unless you turn around and you start throwing punches. What's your purpose for playing this game? Why are you doing what you're doing? And when you know why you're doing what you're doing, you saw my t-shirt, no alarm clock needed. My passion wakes me up. I got up at three o'clock this morning, no clock. I ain't used a clock in 20 years. My passion wakes me up. My drive wakes me up. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? Are you a gazelle or are you a lion? And I'm telling you today, you ain't gotta be perfect. Are you hearing what I'm saying? You don't have to be perfect to get what you want, to do what you want, to have what you want, to be what you want. You don't have to be perfect. It's a lie. Everybody can serve. Anyone can be the leader. You don't have to be perfect, but what you have to do is perfect the day. That's what I want you to do. You'll never be perfect. As long as you're alive, there's always progress. You can always get better, but listen to me. I want you to practice perfecting the 24 hours. You hear me? 60 minutes in a day. 1,440 seconds. That's what I want you to concentrate on. I want you to concentrate on the now. And you know what makes it even worse? Is that you coward. When I wake up in the morning and I'm working on my speech, when I get up in the morning and I'm answering a phone call, when I get up in the morning, listen to me very closely, and I'm writing down every idea I dreamed about, every movie, I can't even watch a movie now, I can't even listen to music without writing something down. I get my iPod and I'm writing everything down. It's right here, everything. So guess what? Guess what? Every week I read, every time I practice it, every book I read, everything I do to make me better. I'm telling you, if you fall in love with small, if you fall in love with every second, every minute, every hour of the day, and you stop thinking about 2012, you stop thinking about 2013, and you focus on the now, you master the now, you become an expert of the now, I'm guaranteeing you, you're going to blow up. I need you to stop trying to do it big. I need you to fall in love with small, and guess what? Big going to be attractive to you. that there is something better for you to do with your time than even being here. Right now, I am Mr. Resistance. I'm distracting you from doing the work you need to do. Get the fuck out of here and do the work of your life. Everybody can serve. Anyone can be the leader. Listen, our gravestone, our gravestone has a date. A day when you were born and a day when you die. And they got a dash in between. And that dash defines what your legacy is. Dr. Miles Monroe compares leaders to the king of the jungle, he says. He says the lion is not the tallest animal in the jungle. The lion is not the largest animal in the jungle. The lion is not the smartest nor the most intelligent animal in the jungle. And yet when the lion shows up, he is king. <laughs> he is king, you don't need to be intelligent. You don't need to be smart. You don't need to have a certain height. You don't need to have a certain weight. You don't need to have any kind of advantage, and yet you can be a leader. I was not the biggest, the strongest, or fastest, but my goals were clear. My actions were and still are in service of those goals. When the gazelle wakes up, it runs. But if a lion ain't chasing it, it stops running. But when the lion wakes up, it don't need nobody to push it. It pushes itself. I'm trying to perfect the now. Are you hearing what I'm saying? I'm trying to look at each second and make sure I'm doing something each second. I want to make sure each minute I'm doing something each minute. I want to make sure every hour I'm doing something every hour. I want to make sure in that day I'm getting something done. On Monday, on Tuesday, on Wednesday, on Thursday, on Friday, that I'm effective. You don't have to be perfect. What wakes you up? What drives you? Why are you playing this game? Are you a gazelle or are you a lion? You take that challenge when you answer the call and you see the other side of pain. It's called glory. This is called glory. Right now, I am Mr. Resistance. I'm distracting you from doing the work you need to do. Get the fuck out of here and do the work of your life. You're defined by what you define failure as. It's not a thing if 
it leads you to your success. It's all part of the journey. It's all part of the journey. You have to appreciate those moments because what happens right after you feel like you failed is who you are and who you will continue to be. You constantly remind yourself after every defeat, after every setback, every time you get knocked down, I've got a saying, if life knocks you down, try and land on your back because if you can look up, you can get up. Failure is a part of the learning process, right? What's the risk of failure? What, you'll be embarrassed? Failure is part of life. The difference for me though is I look at failure as a stepping stone to success. It's a, it's a speed bump. Uh, I know I'm gonna fail. There's always challenges, obstacles, etc. And I literally don't accept any of that as an impediment, as a negative. It's like, good, this is gonna make me stronger. I'm gonna learn something from this. It's not failure if you learn something. See, a lot of people, because of failure, they stop, they stop believing. Let me share something with you. You will fail your way to success. Yes. Eight out of 10 millionaires have been financially bankrupt. You will fail your way to success. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. Best advice that I could give you on success is to know that success is merely the hangover of failure. And that failure is an essential ingredient in creating a learning atmosphere for you so that you can accrue those learnings, those small incremental steps of failure, and collect enough learning so that you can arrive at success. It doesn't matter how many times you fail. It doesn't matter how many times people tell you that you can't do it. It doesn't matter if you don't have a dime in the bank. You will fail your way to success. You will fail at some point in your life. Accept it. You will lose. You will embarrass yourself. You will suck at something. There's no doubt about it. Embrace it, because it's inevitable. You don't make excuses for the failure, you grieve it. You feel the pain. You don't brush it off, you don't downplay it. You feel the pain and you don't rush to feel better. Now, listen, this is a principle of life I'm about to tell you. To get past it, you gotta go through it. That's true in so many areas, but it's particularly true with failure. To get past your failure, that failure in your eye, you gotta go through it. You can't go around your failure, you can't go over your failure, you can't go under your failure, you can't ignore your failure. You need to grieve the failure. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. If I'm going to fall, I don't wanna fall back on anything except my faith. I wanna fall forward. I figure at least this way I'll see what I'm going to hit. You should seek failures. See, if you're playing it safe, you're not gonna win. It's by trying things that you figure out how far you can go. You gotta get outside the box. You're gonna fail. It's okay. Okay? You're gonna fail. And I'm not talking about the tests. It's one thing. I'm talking about to your knees, your skin, bloody, fail. And that's okay, because you know what? You know down deep inside of all of you. That's how you learn. Never be discouraged. Never hold back. Give everything you got. And when you fall throughout life, and remember this, fall forward. Right? Uh, I think we're taught in the system that failure is something that you should be ashamed of. Failure is for the dumb kids, because you get an F. You get a D, right? You're not competent. You didn't comply. You didn't create the evidence of your worthiness. You need to be motivated by failure. How'd you learn how to walk? You, you crawled, then you fell down, busted your tooth, got some blood in your mouth, you get up and you walk, right? Self-directed. Success doesn't look like an A+. It doesn't look like 110 in extra credit. And failure isn't as simple as an F. And it's not always, always like failure could be very gray, right? And being able to discern uh, what you, you might arrive at an event or in your life where you think that, wow, I've succeeded. And you're getting the affir affirmation from all these outside forces. But if it's not aligned authentically with to whom, what you are, it could very much feel like failure. You have to dare to suck. You will never 
make something great if you are afraid that it's going to suck, that it is going to fail. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. Um, you know, it's always a little bit frustrating to me when, when people have a negative relationship with failure. Failure is a massive part of being able to be successful. You have to get comfortable with failure. You have, you have to actually seek failure. Failure is where all of the lessons are. Fail early, fail often, fail forward. And that fire in your belly that got you here, keep it, love it, keep throwing logs on it. It's important. Your tenacity and, and your ability to define who you are through those failures will be your ultimate success. A lot of you are trying to find inspiration and motivation with a depressed mindset. You're depressed because you're not doing shit with yourself. You don't find inspiration by not living in the grip of life. You need to live in the grip of life to find inspiration. Put challenges in front of yourself. When you put a challenge in front of yourself and you attack it, that's when you find inspiration. Try to be 10% better than you were last week. So if you're running 30 miles a week, run 33. If you're swimming 500 meters, swim 550. If some of you aren't doing shit, your 10% is just getting off the couch. The more you walk away from accountability, the weaker you become. Find yourself in the grip of life. You can't find yourself by doing nothing. Let me see if I can fix myself. So I said, if I can just walk one more mile after being in the worst shape of my entire life, this would change everything for me mentally going forward. From this kid who came from dirt nothing, who couldn't read until he was in a junior in high school, and is now here. I went, I walked a mile. I said, hmm, maybe I can walk one more mile. Maybe I can walk another mile. At mile 81, my ex-wife looked at me and said, you're not gonna make the time. When your mind knows it's not going to quit, and this is what I found out, this is my 40% rule. When your mind knows it's not gonna quit, your body will adapt to whatever is in front of it. I ended up running 20 more miles. I did 101 miles in 19 hours and six minutes. And that one day changed, that one 19 hours, it wasn't SEAL training, it wasn't Ranger School, it wasn't Delta Force, it wasn't any of that crap I went through. It was just 19 hours and 6 minutes that forever changed my life to know that we as human beings are capable of anything. And we don't need any special kind of parents or tools to get there. So I'll end you with this. Don't stop when you're tired, stop when you're done. Thank you very much. Come on. Get it. 17. They don't know me, son. Get it. 18. Know me, son. Get it. 19. Know me, son. Yeah. 20. You got some more here. Yeah. 21. Yeah. Get it again. Come on, boy. See it. Good. 22. Who's going to carry the boats and the logs? That's you, buddy. Come on, 23. Come on, 24. One more, David. Who's one more? going to carry the boats. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You're gonna do it. You did it. Yeah. One thing that changed my life is my grandfather. He told me, You're going nowhere in your life. You're not being anything. As bad as that hurt me, it got me to pull my head out of my ass. So learn to stay hard. Have thick skin and do what's right. What you need is the one thing I talk about in my book, which is straight up brutal work ethic. You have to be willing to outwork everybody in the world. And that that that's the hard part. That's the hard part. This isn't like some five-step process where you can do these five steps, you're gonna end up with this magical world. No. Nah. I'm basically teaching you how to callous over your victim's mentality. This is all about the quitting mind. So what's the quitting mind? So let's say it's day one of a job interview. You have your clothes laid out. You've been preparing for weeks and weeks and weeks. You show up and you bring your best self. After a couple months, 
You start showing up to work a little later. You don't look as good. Your breakfast isn't ready. Your mind's getting softer. Repetition every day. Stay hard. Most important conversation is the one you have with yourself. You wake up with it, you walk around with it, you go to bed with it. Eventually, you act on it. We live in a world now that's so kind. We, we find the kind way around everything. Like, if you don't look good, I have to find a kind way of saying, I don't like your shirt. Right. That's not the approach. If that's the approach you're looking for, that book is not for you. Mm. Can't hurt me is not for you. The approach you have to take, at least I took, you take whatever approach you want. The conversation had to be a real honest conversation in the accountability mirror. Guess what? I was fat. Don't find a kind word to say that, you know what? I've gained some weight. No, you're fat. When I couldn't read, not like, hey, you know, you've learned this ability. No, I cannot read. At a fourth grade reading level, I'm struggling. And sometimes I call myself stupid. Not in a way to put myself down. Sometimes you act on it good, sometimes bad. You gotta change the internal dialogue. That person in your head that's talking that sh to you, until you change the internal dialogue in your head, until you callous over the victim's mentality that the world is out to get you because of you are the only, you gotta change that sh I once had that mentality that no one understands what the f I'm going through. And if you keep that mentality, you're gonna stay in the same exact spot that you're in, that no one understands me. There's a whole, there's millions of people. Why do you think a book that I self-published, you know, is doing so well? With a story that's so f up. People are like, I'll never forget, when I went to a publishing house, like, who's gonna resonate with this story? No one's gonna buy this book. I'm like, are you not in the world? Are you not in society? You're never alone. Everybody's going through sh So when people get this mentality of like, you don't understand me. You can throw a rock to someone that can understand you if they're willing to break themselves down and stop hiding. Mm -hmm. A lot of people understand you, mm -hmm. but you gotta stop hiding. And that's why I tell people, a lot of people are going through sh They just hide better than you did. That's all they did, they was hiding better. Don't find words to make yourself feel better because that's what, so we hang around people that make us feel better, that tell us what we want to hear, not what we need to hear. And so we stay away from those people and we stay away from those people, like our internal dialogue becomes that kind, it's okay, it's not okay. So that's where it starts. It starts with that accountability of it's not okay anymore. This can no longer be okay. And calling yourself out for exactly what you are and exactly how you need to fix it. A lot of us give total control to life. We don't have any control of it. We just give all control to life. I do this shit every morning to prepare my mind for what life's gonna throw at me. A healthy body gives you a healthy mind. That's what it's about. So if you go into battle, you want to go into battle with the right mindset, the right gear. In combat, you wear body armor. But what we do wrong is we don't strengthen our minds. You got to strengthen your mind. Take control of that. Most of us live our entire lives avoiding failure. It's funny. I walk around, people come up to me and they say, man, you're that Navy SEAL you went to Ranger School, you were, you know, Air Force Tag P, you know, you uh, did the pull-up record, you run all these ultra races, all this shit, man. The funny thing about it that I think about is this, they know that part of me. This is the part I know about myself. I felt the ASVAB test to get in the military three times. In the Air Force, throw that pararescue. In the SEALs, it took me three times to get through Navy SEAL training. The pull-up record took me three times. This is what I know about me. So what I'm saying is this, you can't live your life being afraid to fail. All those failures may be the success in the day. Stay hard, stay in the fight.
As you know, I'm a serious introvert and um, very afraid of people. I, I uh, got judged so much growing up that this is uncomfortable for me. All these podcasts, you know, that's why I post once a week. But the one thing I realized um, why I wrote the book is honestly, I have a story to tell as we all have a story to tell. And what I realized on my journey was a lot of us don't believe that we can achieve the impossible. And along my journey, I started realizing, man, I gotta tell some people about this shit, man. Like, I discovered something that some people have, but they don't even know, all of us have it. But along this way, I wasn't, like I said, I wasn't a theorist, I became a practitioner. And I was like, my God, I'm busting down so many barriers of, like, I have a learning disability, okay. But I'm catching up with everybody. I, I figured that out. I figured out all these negative things in my life that were keeping me in this hole. I'm like, I gotta tell people, man, that, hang on a second, man. You can f achieve the absolute impossible. Keep pushing forward. It wasn't easy. I mean, there were moments where I felt like we were pushing an impossible weight up the giant mountain. In fact, we fell back down several times. People thought that I was a crazy freak. I'm always hungry for more. I want more. And I think all of you want more. I believe that self-discipline is the definition of self-love. Of course, I've always believed in setting goals really high. I always like to set goals so high that the naysayers always say it's impossible. Let the dream destroy you. Let it strip you. Let it remake and mold you. Don't be afraid. Because millennials are stuck with degrees that are not usable and bills that they can't pay for. Middle America is frustrated because the jobs are gone and they don't seem to be coming back. Inner cities are frustrated because there's no economic opportunities in there. Each of us has a responsibility to stop waiting on someone to rescue us and redesign our lives and create the kind of life you want to live. Ignore the naysayers, to set big goals and to have a big vision. Yes, everything is always impossible until someone does it. We can do the impossible. Let's get started. Do what you can, knock it out. Just build up extra free time. If you need a break, take a break. Do break. what you can, if you need a break, take a break. If you need a little relaxation, take some relaxation. Yeah. Don't waste your time though. People do relaxing, but they, do it, they don't even do it good. They don't even feel relaxed when they get done. What they did is they did something stupid for an hour. They watched YouTube videos for an hour. Did that, did that help you? No. Go outside, go for a run, do some burpees, go surfing, go do some yeah. jiu-jitsu, play with your kids, whatever. Do something that actually has some value. If you don't know where you are going, you don't know what it takes to get there. When you get up in the morning, don't think. Just roll out of bed, go in your life cycle, or go on a bicycle ride, or go to the gym, work out. You know that's what you have to do. And then read something and learn something. So don't even think about it. As soon as you think that you're perfect, that's when you screw. I gotta get better. I gotta lose more weight. I gotta trim down my tummy. I gotta get bigger calves. I gotta get bigger deltas. Listen to me, you have to be careful when you hang around average people. All they want to do is tell you what they can't do, and that's okay that they can't do it, but that has absolutely nothing to do with us. We can go from being homeless in high school dropout to having PhDs writing books and becoming the voice of a generation. We can do whatever we believe we can do, and we don't need anybody's permission to do it but ours. So if you're not quite reaching your goal because you didn't do everything that you could do. You have time. You make the time. The decisions you make right now is up to you. You crying about something that happened to you when you was a kid. You ain't even no kid no more. You a grown man. Take full ownership. The stupid stuff you doing, your parents didn't make you play no video games. And what you crying about? So what your daddy wasn't there? Your mama ended up getting married. What you crying about? He went to work every day. He never beat you. He never abused you. Your mama did the best she knew how to do. What you crying about? You grew up in a house. What you crying about? What the hell are we all waiting for to start attacking life? Waiting for the stars to align? No matter how many years you've lived up till now, 
no matter how many years you have yet to live and the time you've had on this planet, no matter how much of that time you've been wasted over and over and over, right now is the moment you have. When you want to succeed, as bad as you want to breathe, young man, then you will be successful in any area of your life. Is it too cold where you live? Is it too hot where you live? Does it rain too much? Now it's time for some real talk. Life's a real big picture. When I was young, all those things got in my head. Black, not smart enough, single mom, all that bullshit owns space in my head. If you're allowing people and things and situations to own space in your head, you're losing. You wake up in the morning and you're dreading going to work, dude, do something else. <laughs> right. Do something else. And those are hard decisions to make, but when you make those decisions, it's a very liberating experience. I had no money, I had no things, we had no TV, we had no refrigerator, we had nothing as kids. But I was rich because I had a dream. You're gonna get your ass kicked, we're gonna get the shit kicked out of us. You gotta get up, you gotta have faith that the one thing you wanted to happen, oftentimes is the best thing that never happened. So have faith, just keep that in mind, keep plugging away. Three o'clock in the doggone morning. I'm doing it every day and three o'clock in the morning. I'm telling y'all, the breakthrough, I'm gonna break these boys. Why? Because where they come from, they couldn't get up at three o'clock in the morning if they wanted to. They smarter at me. They come from privilege. They got the language, they got the code, they got the rules, they grew up in it, but they will not get up earlier than me. They will not put out more content than me. Life's one big head game. You play with yourself. If you lose, it's because you allow life to get in your head. Stay hard. So I'm getting ready to board my plane yesterday, and an NFL football player comes up to me. You have got to ask you a question. How do you keep that dog mentality? I said, let me ask you a question. When you were younger, what did you want to be? He said, an NFL football player. But once I got there, I lost that dog mentality. He had a finish line in his brain. Guess what? A true dog mentality? I have a dog at home. He never gets full. It's not enough you made to the NFL. Be an MVP. It's not enough you ran a 5K. Put a 10K. Don't be afraid to fail. Anything I've ever attempted, I was always willing to fail. In the movie business, I remember that you pick scripts. Many times you think this is a winning script, but then of course you find out later on when you do the movie that it didn't work, and the movie goes in the toilet. Now we have seen my movies, I mean, uh, Red Sonia, Hercules in New York, Last Action Heroes, those movies went in the toilet. But that's okay, because at the same time, I made movies like Terminator and Conan and True Lies and Predator and Twins that went through the roof. So you can't always win, but don't be afraid of making decisions. You can't be paralyzed by fear or failure, or you will never push yourself. Saturday night, 1.45 a.m., I just wrapped a phenomenal workout here in the Iron Paradise, got after it hardcore. Hardest workers in the room, it's how we do it. Um, the number one question that I'm asked everywhere I go uh, around the world is always, how is it that I stay so motivated? What are the motivating factors in my life that keep me in this psychological space? Um, number one will be gratitude. I try and find a way to be grateful for every single thing I have, every single day wins, losses, loved ones, you name it. My life wasn't always this way. It was much different many moons ago. So these days I'm grateful to the bone for everything. The other thing is hunger. Uh, you always hear people say, well, it's about being number one, about being at the top, or how about this? Um, you're always gonna find somebody out there who's gonna work harder. Well, I don't know that, that might be bullshit, but I know no one is gonna be hungrier than I am. I believe in winning the battle against yourself. People say, why do you say that? because there's a lot of things you can control. When you wake up, I talk about making your bed. Make your bed, make sure your house is clean, make sure you get your breakfast, make sure you shower, shave, whatever you're doing, control that. Don't hit the snooze button. You wake up in the morning time and you own all this stuff because once you leave your house, the world then gets at you. And that's why I believe not, not, not getting up in the morning time and checking your phone immediately. Everybody does that. 
They get up, the first thing they do is grab their phone. Look at the phone. Maybe bad news on there. Mm. So how's your day start off? I don't go to the gym. I don't make my bed. I don't, you're caught up now on that phone. That's how your day starts. You lost control. So once you win that, once you win that battle in the morning time, then once you go out, now you've won. You go outside your house, you may lose your job. You may have a bad hit, but you won something. So, you, so you're going into battle having already won something. Having already won. So then if you hit this news button, you go out, you just defeated already. You're behind the power curve. Now you've won something. You feel better about yourself. Mm -hmm. So now you're able to take these hits along the way. Yeah. Win what you can. The most important thing is that you have a vision, that you have a goal. Because without that vision and without that goal, again, you're drifting around and you're never going to end up anywhere. People don't become successful just by accident. You know, I mean, maybe the guy uh, that found gold in California and started the gold rush, but don't count on that. That's the one in a, in a lifetime kind of a situation. So you got to really have a specific goal. And to me, to have that vision that I want to be Mr. Universe, that I want to be the greatest bodybuilder of all time, that was a great vision and that specifically to look like Reg Park and to be up there on that stage and to lift the trophy overhead and to win the championship over and over and over again. So that was a great goal. You have to have a goal. Now, it doesn't have to be that specific goal, but it has to have some goal. This is why I always recommend to people, sit down, take your time, and start thinking about why do you want to work out? What is your goal? And then it can't be as crazy as it is. It could be, uh, you know, I want to impress girls. If that's your goal, so be it, but it motivates you. So somebody just asked me a cool question, said, DJ, you're on top. Where could you possibly go from here? And you always talk about outworking your competition. Who's your competition? It's a great question. Thank you for the compliment, by the way. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to be on top, but anytime you reach the top, you always wanna make sure that you have the desire to raise the bar and take the brass ring to places it's never been. That's the key with being on top. Just because it's never been done doesn't mean it can't be done. And in terms of competition, great question. Everyone's my competition, but a fundamental key that I've learned over the years is, and I'll share it with you, my number one competition is me. It's always you versus you. You gotta be the one to get up every morning, be disciplined, put in the consistent daily hard work because that gains success. No coach, no trainer, no mentor, uh, no boss can do it. You versus you. Back when I was growing up, the song came out. All I need is a miracle. Well, guess what? That miracle ain't coming. There is no perfect time to start. You gotta start now with changing your life. We're all being tested in life. And guess what? This is one test you can't cheat on. We all have our own test. Some of us are obese. Some of us are depressed. Some of us are insecure. In the military, we have this big old rucksack on the back. Have batteries, water, extra gear. You extra gear is the shit you're dealing with in life. And the only way to overcome it is for you and you alone to face it. You have to do your best work when you're at least motivated. So those days you don't want to do it, guess what you got to do? Stay hard. The day is 24 hours, and we sleep six. Now, I know there's some out there that say, whoa, 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 I need eight. Well, I say just sleep a little faster. Because the bottom line is we have six hours of sleep, 24 hours are available, so you have 18 hours now available to your work, your family, your hobbies. E.T., what was it like being homeless? I don't remember. What was it like eating out of trash cans? I don't remember. I ain't on that. Let me tell y'all the hardest part of my life. The hardest part of my life was not being homeless. I ain't had no dreams or no goals. I didn't want nothing. Eating out of trash cans wasn't the hardest thing I've ever done. The hardest thing I ever did was get my GD, go to college, study every doggone day and still fail. That's hard. That's hard. When you writing a paper for three, four weeks, you turn it in and you get, still get a 2.0. That's hard. It's hard when you're in a library and you study it and you read and you take the test and you get a 55. That's hard. So what I want you to understand about the breakthrough is that 90% 
is work, but the last 10%, that's fight. One day, all these early mornings and late nights will pay off. One day, everything you've been working toward will be worth it. Success does not come to those who wait. Success comes to those who go out and get it. Stop using the fact that you don't have money as an excuse. I understand everybody else in the world tells you you need money to make money and all that other kind of stuff. Yep. We all have the same 24 hours in a day. Hustle is putting it all on the line. Hustle is waking up one day, the day before you die, and realizing you gave it your all into the parenting of your children, the building of your businesses, the philanthropy that you wanted to do. Whatever you define, it's just, you know, all in, emotionally and executionally, in theory and strategy and in execution. Those at the top of the mountain didn't fall there. Good things happen to those who hustle. Success is the reward of hard work and hustle. I hustle like every day is my last. I hustle because it is the only thing I know. I hustle because hard work will lead me to success. I hustle because I want this more than anything. out there and get it. It's time for 5 a.m. starts. It's time for late night finishes. It's time to work 24 hours straight. It's time to go all in. It's time to work a side hustle after you get home from work. It's time to give it your all. The reason you need to hustle is because it will separate you from the other 99% of people. You need to be the hardest worker at all times. You need to be beating everyone around you. People should talk of your work ethic with wonder and awe. They will be shocked by how hard you work. Discipline creates freedom. Discipline creates freedom. That's it. You have to be disciplined. You have to have a method. You have to act, learn, and repeat, and you have to keep figuring it out. If you're doing something else and you, and you want to do this thing you love, you do it after hours. You work nine to six, you get home, you kiss the dog, and you go to town. Right? I mean, you start building your equity and your brand and whatever you're trying to accomplish after hours. You, everybody has time. You are not going to give up because of a little pain. You won't quit because of a bad situation. It isn't in your nature to give up on this. It is yours for the taking, but you must be willing to put in the work. All the young entrepreneurs out there, you have one thing all of us desire, time. 
So it is time to use your time wisely. Stop playing video games all day long. Stop watching TV all night. Stop mindlessly scrolling through Instagram. Stop with the YouTube binge sessions. Stop wasting your time on things that are not going to help you get the goals you want. Stop doing things that will not help you toward your dreams. Now is the time to stand up for what you believe in. There is no better time to start working on your dreams than right now. What are you waiting for? Get going now. Imagine for a moment, you have nowhere to live, no money, just the shirt on your back. What would you do? Would you still have the will and mental fortitude to work on your dreams? Would you have the strength to keep going on your journey? Or would you crumble? Would you end up in the gutter? Let me tell you something. If tomorrow wasn't promised, what would you give for today? Forget everything else. Forget everything else. Forget that there was any sunlight left. What would you spend today thinking about? You see, in life, bad things happen. Sometimes life hits you on the blind side. You don't see it coming. But you need the mindset to be able to continue, the mindset to keep going when everything is falling to pieces around you. We get one opportunity in life, one chance in life to do whatever you're going to do, to lay your foundation and to make whatever mark you're going to make, whatever legacy you're going to leave, leave your legacy. Why? Why do I need to keep going when bad things happen? Because that is life. If we all stopped when something bad happened, there would be zero successful people to ever exist. It takes courage to act. Part of being hungry when you've been defeated, it takes courage to start over again. And it's found through effort. Wins and losses come a dime a dozen. But effort, nobody can judge effort. Because effort is between you and you. Effort ain't got nothing to do with nobody else. Courage is going from failure to failure without losing enthusiasm. When you step into your fears and continue to push yourself to go on, something happens for you. It will enable you to transcend yourself. So that team that think they're ready to see you, they think what they seen on film, they ain't saw what film shows. Because every day is a new day. Every moment is a new moment. So now you got to go out and show them that I'm a different creature now than I was five minutes ago. Bad things do happen. Life will hit you on the blind side. And it is in these moments that you develop true strength. It is in these moments you learn how to become successful. Cause I'm pissed off for greatness. Cause if you ain't pissed off for greatness, that means you okay with being mediocre. There ain't no man in here okay with being just basic. So let's do what we do. If you are going through a hard time right now, maybe you lost someone special to you. Maybe you failed on the big stage. Maybe you're struggling to get going again. Know this, you are more than enough. You can do this. You will be successful. The storm will pass. This is not the end for you. And when you look back in years to come, it will be in this moment where you mark the start of your success story. It is easy to be negative today. It is easy to have low morale today. But if you can begin to harness yourself and say that where 
I am, I'm going to do the best I can with what I got because that is an expression of who I am. When all the odds are stacked up against you, can you walk into the eye of the storm and fight again? It is in these moments that true champions are made. It is in these moments that greatness is sparked. You need to test yourself. You need to push your limits to places they have not been before. You can't do that from your comfort zone. To get stronger, you must put yourself under more pressure. If you get into the habit of just being mediocre, it will become a part of your consciousness. If you get in the habit of giving less than what you have it within you to give, it will begin to reflect itself in your personality. It will begin to damage you psychologically. Success is simply many failures that add up to a win. We forget that greats have fallen before. We forget that their journey started from the bottom. It was one step backward, two steps forward, all the way to the top. Learn to love losing. Don't be frozen by the fear of it. To really be something special, you must be willing to put it all on the line. You must be willing to fight without the fear of losing. No limits. You can only truly shine when you learn that losing is part of success. It has its good and it has plenty of bad, but I always like to focus on the good because the good shines true. But where I come from, we're not supposed to climb to these heights. We're told that. It's instilled in us. I've just used all that that fuel that I'm not supposed to do it, but I'm going to do it. And I'm going to outwork everyone that says I cannot do it. And that's what I did. And that's how I rose up. And long may it continue. And you don't want to be a part of that kind of self-destructive behavior. And so you want to set some high standards for yourself. You've got to develop a sense of urgency. Stop living your life like you have a thousand years to live. In life, you're either here today and you're gone today. If there's something that you want to do and you can't do it all at one time, do just a little bit of it. Good things happen to those who hustle. Success is the reward of hard work and hustle. I hustle like every day is my last. I hustle because it is the only thing I know. I hustle because hard work will lead me to success. I hustle because I want this more than anything. One day, all these early mornings and late nights will pay off. One day, everything you've been working toward will be worth it. Success does not come to those who wait. Success comes to those who go out and get it. Go out there and get it. The power to hold on in spite of everything, the power to endure, this is the winner's quality. The hunger, the ability to face defeat again and again without giving up. This is a winner's quality. You have that quality within you. When you're hungry, you don't care about the facts. You don't care about the odds. Being realistic is the most commonly traveled road to mediocrity. He who says he can and he who says he can't are both usually right. Those at the top of the mountain didn't fall there. It's time for 5 a.m. starts. It's time for late night finishes. It's time to work 24 hours straight. It's time to go all in. It's time to work a side hustle after you get home from work. It's time to give it your all. The reason you need to hustle is because it will separate you from the other 99% of people. You need to be the hardest worker at all times. You need to be beating everyone around you. People should talk of your work ethic with wonder and awe. They will be shocked by how hard you work. I've, I've never really viewed myself as particularly talented. Where I excel is ridiculous, sickening work ethic. You know, while the other guy's sleeping, I'm working. While the other guy's eating, 
I'm working. There's greatness in you. And you've got to learn how to tune out the critics outside and the critic inside. And since I'm going to do this, I'm going to harness my will and I'm not going to let anything stop me. I deserve this. I'm going to do it until. He who is not courageous enough to take risk will accomplish nothing in life. If you want something, you have got to be relentless. And you've got to be so relentless regardless of what comes down the pike that you're always looking for a way to get over always looking for a way that you can break through always looking for a way that you can win always looking for a way that you can strike a telling blow live your life with passion with some drive if we all stopped when something bad happened there would be zero successful people to ever exist Don't stop when you're tired, stop when you are done. Once a quitter, always a quitter. Let's go champ, let's go champ. Until you have had the taste of finishing, you will not respect yourself. To be the man, you gotta be the man. To be the man, you gotta be the man. I'm a one-man army, one-man army. The world can go against me, I'm still coming out on top. Until you follow through, until something is done, come hell or hot water, tears and struggles and pain, and you go through it anyway, and you show up, and you continue to fight on, no matter the circumstances. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. Hard work. On one man army. One man army. The world can go against me. I'm still coming on top. You are relentless. You will never stop. This isn't a game to you. You are not going to give up because of a little pain. Let's go, champ. Let's go, champ. You don't stop when you're tired. You stop when you're done. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. Hard work. Dedication. To be the man, you gotta be the man. When he was tired, he was running mile 18. To be the man, you gotta be the man. A little pain along the way is your rite of passage. It is the battle scars of the successful, the marks of a warrior who succeed at this adventure through life. See, some people quit because things are out of control. Nobody quits what you can control. But the moment you get in something where you don't get your way, or you get reprimanded, or you get corrected, or you go through this, or you go through that, or you go through the other, or, or it's bad conditions or bad circumstances, the, the first thing the immature mind says is, this is ridiculous, I quit. Don't stop when you're tired, stop when you are done. Once a quitter, always a quitter. You might not have seen it. You saw the glamour. But let me tell you what you didn't see. I fought to do that. I fought my way up. I fought to get to work. I fought to get up on my feet. I fought to stand. I fought to carry on. I fought to love. I fought to live. I fought to get out of the bed. I fought with my fears, my doubts, my anxieties, my insecurities. I fought with haters, liars, backbiters, and betrayers. I even had to fight with family. And many times I laid in the bed. I couldn't go to sleep because I was fighting with myself. I fought. I kept. Kept the faith. I 
was believing. Lonely, I was believing. Betrayed, I was believing. Don't stop when you're tired. Stop when you are done. Once a quitter, always a quitter. Twenty nineteen is stacking up to be the year of the underdog. The boxing world was shaken up as the heavyweight giant Anthony Joshua was dethroned by a last minute call in. A fighter who nearly ninety nine percent of people doubted he could win before the fight. 25 to 1 odds at the bookies, bullied in high school for being overweight, called in to fight the world champion just one month before the fight. People may doubt you, but never doubt yourself. Prove them wrong. Ruiz said, the people who are doubting me will become my fans. He never doubted himself. He came away with the win and one of history's biggest shock wins. A lot of people may doubt you. A lot of people may count you out. Some of them may want you to fail. Some may hate on you or speak bad of you. But you know who else was doubted? Michael Jordan. He was cut from his high school team. Steve Jobs was laughed at. Jack Ma was rejected from jobs. Stephen King's first novel was rejected 30 times. People don't want to see you succeed. Because if you can do it, then they have no excuse for themselves anymore. Just know you are among good company in the people who have been doubted before. Did you think I need to pack this in? Never. Why not? I don't ever give up. I mean, I'd have to be dead or completely incapacitated. Life is one big tug of war, and a lot of times you have to pull yourself through life. This morning, I did not want to get up. Don't let your past shackle your future. We are all going through hard times. Hard times come when you least expect it. Don't let the pain of yesterday ruin the chance of happiness someday. We are all able to push past unimaginable pain. Throughout your day, you will have things that will be out of your control. Mistakes will happen, but don't let this take over your day and especially don't let it take over the next day. Think about what happened, how and why it went wrong, and then move on. The day you choose can be solely determined by you and your ability to control your mood. I look at a day in one hour chunks. This way, if I have a bad hour, it will not affect the other hours of that day. You can control your time so that your time doesn't control you. Why allow one bad moment in your life determine your future? The most powerful people in the world use their time wisely for things that matter. They realize that time is valuable. At Amazon, they have business plans that are five to ten years ahead of schedule. They control their time. And that is why they are one of the most successful companies ever to exist. Don't let yesterday take up too much of today. Accept where you are and the responsibility that you're going to take yourself where you want to go. Someone said we have two primary choices in life. We can either accept conditions as they exist or we can take the responsibility to change them. See, a lot of people want to exempt themselves from taking responsibility. All they want to do is talk about the problem. Every time you see them, they'll tell you their story over and over and over and over again. No, no. You want to take responsibility for your life. I got me here. I can get me out of this. And I'm getting out. 
I'm not going to be a volunteer victim. George Bernard Shaw said there are two kinds of people in life. You know, he said those that make things happen, those that watch things happen, and those that don't know what happened. So part of beginning to get unstuck, you've got to decide that the behavior pattern that you have adopted doesn't work for you. You've got to change your strategies and changing your strategy means reinventing your life. Recreating you and you have the power to do that. You can decide that you're going to stand up to life. You can, you have the power to make that decision. You can decide, I'm going to work on myself and develop myself. I'm going to empower me. There are times when anything that can happen will happen. Murphy's Law will be knocking at your door. Why? I don't know why. That's called life. And you have to deal with it. Sometimes your life will be in a slump. Just like sports, some of the best shooters can't hit baskets different times in games. They get in a slump. Do they sit on the sideline and say, you know, I just didn't hit a basket today? No, they continue to execute. I suggest to you that if you are facing a challenge, don't stop. Stay busy, work your plan. Continue to do those things that you know that work for you after you have evaluated yourself in the situation. So there's a lot of scars we have on our bodies that people can see and they tell a story but a lot of us have scars in our brains. The more and more I got into that run, I started gaining more and more confidence. Bad childhoods, bad adulthood, those scars in your brain we don't talk about, we hide. Scarring is proof that our past is real. But the one thing we do is we allow to control our lives and we get off the log. Well, it's time to get back on the log. Sometimes you gotta fight pain with pain. Stay hard. You gotta be willing to find the confidence. Stay in the fight, stay in the war, stay in the battle, armor your mind. You can break physically, you can break mentally, you can break your heart you can break your spirit and none of those are fun and all of those are gonna leave a mark but the mark that they leave can be the mark of victory or can be the mark of defeat i've been cheating myself and my family wherever you are whatever you're doing do it with everything that you have Develop the habit of giving more than what you're paid for. Develop the habit of, of setting standards that others will be measured by. Someone said, do not go where the path may lead, but go where there's no path and leave a trail. Because every time you break, and in every way that you break, while it's a chance, it's definitely a chance for you to give up and for you to just to fall apart. You are going to incur, incur a lot of disappointment, a lot of failure, a lot of pain, a lot of setbacks, a lot of defeats. But in the process of doing that, you will discover some things about yourself that you don't know right now. What you will realize is that you have greatness within you. What you'll realize is that you're more powerful than you can ever begin to imagine. But there's also opportunity. There's opportunity to get stronger and get smarter and get faster and get tougher and get more stable and get more resilient and get better. In fact, if you break, the fight is just beginning. And as you crawl up and out of that dismal and wretched place covered and you're covered in blood and sweat and dirt and filth as you rise above what you were and as you take the form of 
of who you are supposed to be, you will see that in the very act of standing up, in the very act of fighting on, you will become and you will remain. You've got to focus on you. And as you convince you, as you sell yourself, every day, every day, every day, you will begin to see a difference in the things that you're doing. Selling yourself on your ability to perform a job, to achieve a certain objective, telling yourself every day, here I go again, and I got what it takes. This is my day, and nothing out here is going to stop me. Two and a half year out the ring, ten stone ballooned, mental health problems. I just showed the world tonight, everyone suffering with mental health, that you can come back and it can be done. Everybody out there who has the same problems that I've been suffering with, I did that for you guys. You know the truth, everybody knows I won that fight. And if I can come back from where I come from, then you can do it too. So get up, get over it and let's do it. Seek help and let's do it together as a team. Anything is possible with the right mindset. If you believe in yourself and you sacrifice and dedicate with the right help, you can come back. Because when I sit here and say, I was on the brink of suicide, I mean suicide. And I came back with the help of Ben Davison and a great team around me, we were able to achieve what we achieved tonight. I bought a brand new Ferrari convertible in the summer of 2016. And I was in it and I was on the highway and there's a strip of the highway where I am and at the bottom of about a five mile strip there's a massive bridge that crosses the motorway and I knew that and I got the car up to 190 miles an hour I was heading towards that bridge and I didn't care what no one was thinking I didn't care about hurting my family, me, my career, people who friends, anybody, I didn't care I didn't care about nothing, I just wanted to die so bad I give up on life But when I set my mind to doing something, I'll do it. And every single time I've ever set my mind to anything, I've done it. Even the unthinkable things, if I set my mind to, I've done it. Who thought I could come here and box like that after the two and a half year out the ring? And I fought back from suicide and mental health and depression and anxiety. And I wanted more than anything tonight to show the world that it can be done. Anything is possible with the right mindset. If you believe in yourself and you sacrifice and dedicate with the right help, you can come back. Because when I sit here and say, I was on the brink of suicide, I mean suicide. And I came back with the help of Ben Davison and a great team around me, we were able to achieve what we achieved. I am a true bread fighting man. If you look back a year ago today, I was about 400 pounds. I was in terrible shape. I was so, so terrible. It's no secret what I've been through. That's what true champions do. You can either make two decisions on that floor, stay down or get up. And as long as there's life left in this body, I'll keep continue to fight. But it, it's proof that anyone can come back from anything with the right mindset and right help. Anyone can do it. It ain't just me. I ain't a special human being. I'm just a normal man. But with the right help and the right guidance, anyone can turn their life around. And like I say, I wasn't fighting for myself. And when I was down, it wasn't, I wasn't just down on that campus in round 12 for me and my family. I was, I was representing everybody who suffers around the world. I had to get up. I couldn't stay down. I had to get up and show that you can continue and you can carry on and anything is possible. Warriors, 
Warrior man here, class begins right now. No matter how many years you've lived up till now, no matter how many years you have yet to live, <clears throat> no matter how many cups you've made in your life, in the time you've had on this planet, no matter how much of that time you've wasted over and over and over, right now is the moment you have. That's all you've got. Right now, as you're watching me, you should be here now. Where are you? Where are you right now? Because most people can't concentrate on anything longer than 30 seconds. And I hope, I hope, I hope you can be honest with me and tell me that you're looking right at me right now. You realize that I'm giving you my total undivided attention because I want your mindset about yourself and about the world at large to change right now. And we're gonna start with two things. Most people will say about virtues, virtues being those things <clears throat> that you put in action that lead to positive good consequences. Vices being those things you do that lead to bad and negative consequences. Most people will say about virtues that the most important virtue to have is courage. That all the other virtues will follow from courage. Or the most important virtue is integrity, honesty, or perseverance. Whichever one they choose is the most important one. They say that's the first one. You do that one, you practice that one, you put that one into action, all the other ones will follow. I disagree. The most important virtue that you need to have at play, that you need to have buried deep inside of you and it needs to be operating at its optimal levels all the time, 24-7, is your belief, your belief in yourself. Because if you don't believe first that who you are, this being that you are, this human being you are, your life here on this planet is of a value, is of a value in and of itself worth something, then those other virtues won't mean anything to you at all. They won't have any worthiness to you at all. Even if you happen to stumble by mistake or by accident across putting them into action once in a while, the first thing, the first virtue you need to have operating at 100% is your belief in yourself. Time to rise and shine again. That you're getting another day, another opportunity to do something great in this great life that you came here to live. Be a real shame if you do. I am here today to interrupt your regularly scheduled programming with the Truth Bulletin. And when I say regularly scheduled programming, I don't mean your Super Bowl festivities. I mean your life. Yesterday was a day for letting loose, kicking back, getting wild and crazy, many different ways for many of you, but today is another day to wake up and again smell reality. To take your head out of your daydreaming ass and realize your life is real, it's not a fantasy, and it's time to quit indulging in activities and behaviors that only make you look like an idiot and only turn you into a fat ass. Unless you've got some companion, you know, or you can afford to have a self-motivator, a, a motivation coach beside you 24 hours a day to just keep you jacked up and inspired and energetic about making the right choices, you're going to have to do it yourself. You may not get it from the crowd of people that you hang with, the, the people that you consider your friends. What are you? You're an animal. You're an animal that's created by a creator and you have a unique set of skills and tools and abilities and powers that makes you more powerful than any other creation or being or animal on this planet. You have your mind. Your mind gives you a greater power than any other animal that's been created. And your potential in life lies there. It begins and ends there. What you will do in your life, where you will go in your life, is how much you believe in the power of this thing here. There are no limits on what you can learn and know with your mind and what you can achieve, how far you can push it, what kind of demands can be placed on it, what kind of challenges you can rise up to if you will only engage the power of your mind. A lot of people tend to think that 
I never had a problem or I never have any temptation for other stuff. I do, but I look at the choices I have before me, like when it comes to food, and I ask myself, what price am I going to pay? And uh, when I do indulge or have indulged, I don't like the price that I pay. But many of you, because you write me, you correspond with me, you have made a habit out of making the wrong choices when it comes to food and eating habits. And you have gotten to a place where you believe it doesn't matter anymore. And that's what I want to call these mentoring minutes. I want to call it, it does matter. It does matter. It always matters all the time. But you're surrounded by other people who also have convinced themselves that it doesn't matter. I mean, you, you work in a place, you go with a group of people to a regular lunch spot, you all go in. Um, probably in a lot of your casual conversation, most of you talk about how you don't like the way you feel all the time, that as you're getting older, you feel like you don't have the same energy that you used to have when you were younger. You don't like the way you fit in your clothes. <clears throat> it's because you've made that all a habit, a bad habit, and you can turn it around and you can develop good habits, but you're gonna to have to take small steps and you gotta start now. You have to start now with the choices that you make. And most generally, you are going to have to motivate yourself. That's just the way it is. That's why it's called self-motivation. But if you don't engage intensity or passion in your life, then you aren't living your life to its fullest. Intensity, passion for something will outdo, will win out over knowledge, skills, talent, natural talent, natural gifts, every single time. Not that that stuff is not important, but there are many examples throughout history of people simply because they were intense, intense in an unusual, sometimes off-putting way, aggressive, assertive, determined to do what they had in their mind to do. They make monuments to those people. And those are the people that inspire me. Not because I have any idea inside of me whatsoever that I'm gonna have a monument built for me, but I want to get the most out of my life. And if you can't summons up the energy, the excitement, the enthusiasm for something, then you're just, your life every day is gonna be a drag to wake up to. When you crawl out from underneath the covers every morning and you sit on the edge of the bed, you have a choice before you. I mean, we didn't make the world the way it is. It's filled with alternatives. Always will be. Until we aren't here anymore, it will always be alternatives. There will always be the good, there will always be the bad. There will always be the beautiful, there will always be the ugly. There will always be the uh, excellent, and there will always be the incompetent. There will always be what is wonderful and what is horrible. We didn't make the rules of the world. So fighting against that, that fact, that axiomatic truth that the world is created of alternatives is just a waste of energy. But spending your energy on your choices that you make every day is where the secret lies. But it isn't just about making PRs in the weight room. It's about living a strong life. And you start with power and self-belief and that you are a unique individual. This thumbprint makes you different from the other six billion people on this planet. And it stands for something. It's not for nothing. And you need to believe that with all that you are. Every cell of your body needs to believe that that you are one of a kind, that you are an original, and that you will not apologize for it at all. The lying can stop right now. The lying you do to yourself every day when you push back against the greatness that wants to come out of you. From now on, you do not give the benefit of the doubt to the rest of the world and all the other people on this planet. You take your head out of the world's ass. You start thinking for yourself and you realize 
that not everybody on this planet wants to be a leader. Not everybody on this planet wants to do something great in their lives. Like you, feel that voice inside of you, urging you on to do. No, you stop. You don't apologize anymore for this greatness that lies in you and this desire you have to want to bring it alive. No more, no more at all. The world needs fucking leaders and it needs you. And that's why you're here. That's why you stepped up to the edge of the cliff. You weren't afraid and you're jumping off in free fall without a parachute. And you're gonna figure things out on the way down. That's what we're gonna do here at Warrior University. From here on out, you stop lying to yourself.